Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the quick selection and magic wand tools in Photoshop. Theme tune! Do 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 do! Magic wand! Magic wand! I'm Harry Potter, that's his glasses. Magic wand! Espelliarmus! I don't even think that that's a um, Harry Potter thing, is it? Photoshopicus! <laughs> and I wonder how many people say that in the um, comments below. Photoshopicus. Okay, so the magic wand tool and the quick selection tool inside Photoshop essentially allows you to make selections pretty quickly using the power of Photoshop so that you can do anything with those selections. Now remember there's loads of different ways of making selections and there isn't one correct way. Every image is different so you have to try out the different methods and you'll soon learn which ones are best under which circumstances. Like, are you going to use the focus range? Are you going to use a color range? Quick selection, magic wand, or lasso, or pen tool, or anything else. So, let's jump into Photoshop and have a look at this today. Now, we're going to be using this image of Rosie. If you want to use this image too, head over to photosincolor.com and you can download this image. So, it's pretty simple to do. Over here on the side is where we have these two tools, Quick Selection and Magic Wand. They appear over on the side selection here. So let's quickly see how these work. Starting off with a Quick Selection tool, it's exactly what you'd expect. It selects quickly. <laughs> so I can just draw it over Rosie here and you can see that it's doing a really great job of selecting her. Now I like to select and let go often because I find that the more you hold on it starts making more and more mistakes in my opinion. Now you can see what I'm doing is adding to it each time and that's because I have this button selected up here. The first one here makes, so command D to deselect, the first one makes a selection and then every click you make after that adds it to that selection. But if I was for example to do this, okay, I don't want it there, so I want to remove that. So if I hit Option, or I click the minus one up here, but I can actually just hit Option, and then it's going to minus it, and it's actually going to get rid of that selection, and I can literally just get rid of it like so. And that is essentially how the quick selection works. It uses color and contrast in an image to analyze it. And you can see that that there has done a very good job. If I hit Q, it's going to show me what it is, but watch when I pop this arm in. Are you ready? Oh, let me just come out of that. Sorry, I have to do it without that selected. And I go like so, and then I hit Q, and all of a sudden it's added in this middle section. So you can see it really does a great job, but not a perfect job. You'll have to usually go in and make some refinements to this. One way of doing that is you can zoom all the way in like so, get nice and tight and then you can change your the size of the brush and then you can just brush in smaller areas. That's a really great way of doing this and very quickly. So I can add the fingers, hit option, get rid of this blue area and you can see it's doing a really good job of it. Now let's have a quick look at some of the other options that you have. Have auto enhance which means that as you're doing this it's going to enhance the outline. But what you're also going to find is that it's going to take a lot more time loading each time you finish making a selection. So if you're going for speed, then I would actually keep auto enhance off and then you can just enhance it later by getting in nice and close to the image. Now the other one is sample all layers. Now usually you want to have that turned off because you're going to be sampling. You only want to be making the selection on the layer you're on. But let me show you what that does. If I was to go Command Shift N, that opens up a new layer over this side. Nice and simple. I'm going to take the brush tool and I'm going to draw on this layer in red a line coming off the. Oh, I've got that selection made, you see. Command D, deselects, and I'm going to draw off her nose this line here. So we can see that this is what I've drawn. Now if I select the layer that Rosie is on and I go for quick select and don't sample all layers, so that's turned off. Now when I draw her head, you see the shape of her nose. 
Now, Command D to deselect that. If I have sample all layers, then I do this. You can see actually the selection that it's made is it's included the red. So we can actually turn that layer off. It's included that red thing because it was sampling all layers. So remember, if you're getting some weird things happen, make sure that this is not checked. Or if you want that effect, then make sure that it is checked. Command D to deselect that. So that there is essentially how the quick select works. It only works when you've got good contrasty areas and very clear things to cut out. Now, you can also use the refine edge within that. So if we make this selection, I have a tutorial all about the refine edge, but essentially I can now come in and make all of these changes. Um, for example, like this inside well, I would never do that, but inside this element that I can make all of those changes within quick selection. Massively powerful. Command D to deselect. Now let's take a look at the magic wand. So with this one, if I was to click on her face, you can see that it's making far less selections. Now that's because there's lots of differences within the model. So instead for the magic wand, you're better off selecting on something which is very flat in color like this, the clouds and the sky around her. So you can see that that's actually far better for selecting big, flat areas of color. Massively powerful for that, in fact. Now, a few options that you have with this. Let me zoom out to show you. Tolerance. Essentially what that does is how, how varied does it look? So for example, we're gonna select blue, got a tol tolerance of 10, which is fairly low. It's gonna go all of this distance because all of this is blue, but as soon as the blue starts changing color, it said, oh, that's not part of the selection. But if I was to do the same thing on 100 intolerance, let's deselect, same area and click on that. Now you can see it's actually selected the entire sky because what it's doing is saying, oh, well, all of those fit in close enough to that blue. So tolerance can be massively helpful. I personally think keeping tolerance lower is actually better. The reason is this, you deselect here and you can select this item. But again, by selecting the next option here, by doing this, what I can do is I can keep adding to my selection. That means that the variants aren't quite as high per click, but as I click more, it's building up a far better selection. So that's what would happen in my opinion. Okay, so let's hit Q and you can see it's done a really great job there of cutting out the model. Now, the other options that you have inside this, always you have refined edge and you also have sample or layers just as you did before, which is really, really powerful. So let's give this a go for a second. Let's deselect this. Let's go to quick selection and let's see how we can select Rosie out of this image. Okay, it's pretty simple. What we're gonna start off with is the quick select tool. So I'm gonna make a nice quick selection and I'm gonna go over her body like so, quickly go like this and go, okay, it's made a pretty good selection. Using Q will show me that. Okay, let's add in the feet like so and let's add in this arm like so and these fingers like so. Okay, so I hit Q, it's done an okay job but also what it's done is it seems to have selected other items and other areas where it's not quite as perfect. So for this, we can combine by now adding the magic wand tool and going to the remove. Now, if I click on this area, so now it's removed all of this and look how great a selection now I'm able to make. And I can go around this and then I can add into the selection by adding into this hair and it's gonna go and start adding in these items just by me clicking on them. Okay, now let's come down here to the hand Let's zoom in down here. Let's come over to the hand where we see we've got some problems. So option to remove, and we're just gonna click between the fingers and it's actually gonna go in. And you can see it's adding and removing all the elements that we want to. So I can change the tolerance up to say 50 so that I can include these areas. Now I'm very happy. Ooh, 
So I've gone too far with this. So option minus, and now we're starting to work really well. Now this isn't the most perfect selection. So I could come in here, for example, because I know that I need to get rid of this from the selection. I'm just using the lasso tool. So I've got rid of that. I know that I want to add in this to the selection. And then I also have the bracelet over here, which was a bit of a challenge. I sometimes do it manually. There you go. That'll do. We're not looking for something perfect, but you get the idea of this. So once we've done this, we'll zoom all the way out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit layer mask. So it's going to mask that and you can see Rosie is now cut out completely. Now, if I hold down shift and click on the layer mask, I can turn that on and off and I can see, okay, that's done a really fantastic job of cutting Rosie out. So what would I do with her at this point? Well, now let's have a quick bit of fun so we can see what I could do. Now, what I can do is I could, for example, take her into this image and go, oh, let's put her in here. Now, her skin tones are completely incorrect for this image and she's the wrong size. And we're just gonna do this really quickly so you could see the use for doing a cutout. So something like this. Now what we wanna do is change the skin tone of her to match this because there's lots of pinks in here. So we're gonna come up here to color balance and in the mid-tones we're gonna go towards the pinks and we're gonna lock this onto just the channel which is rosy. And you can see I can go too far but I can really take out those greens and really, okay, so now she's, I feel like she's way better blended into there. And now she's kind of launching over here, but we're gonna do a few other things to make her fit into this image because she definitely feels like she's not there right now. So we want to add a color tone to the whole thing. So we'll go, uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring in a photo filter and this goes on top of all the layers and there's no clipping. So now that's, so I've not clipped onto anything. So now that's color toned the whole thing. So now they're matching even more. Background, let's add a bit of a blur to the background. Filter, uh, blur gallery, and let's go for a tilt shift so that we can keep the ground that she's jumped from here in focus. And then we'll blur the rest of it out behind her. Like so, we don't want to do it too much though, because that's how we can essentially ruin an image. So let's pull that down so it's not quite as much. That brings her back, makes her pop out of there. Looking really fantastic. I think she's too high um, in the image. So let's just let this load. Let's bring her down. And this is the beauty of layers, you see. I can bring her down like so. Now let's add in onto the top of this a black and white filter making her a little lighter, and we're just gonna to tone this down, so we're only gonna have this about 20%. There we go. Mm, in fact, I don't really like where that's gone. It's, it's all gone a little bit orange, which I think is the photo filter. So let's change that photo filter into something more blue, maybe. Let's go into here, and let's go for a cooling filter, LBB. We'll take it all the way down. Now that's looking good. Now we're going to flatten the entire thing. Option Command Shift E. And that just makes a new layer of everything. Filter Camera Raw Filter. I'm just showing you what you can do with an image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split tone this. This is a great way to make things kind of all fit together by adding the same toning to an image like so. I'm going to bring back the exposure, bring back the highlights, lift up the shadows. This isn't necessarily what I would do. Tone curve, I'm actually going to give it one of these, looks great. In effects, I'm going to boost the grain inside here. So the whole image is going to have some grain on it. That's what brings all of this together. I'm going to hit OK. That looks great. And then I'm going to go crop. Now, I've whipped through all of this, but you can follow along with this so you can see how, double click on that, and now we have an image which essentially went, started off here, well, in fact, started off here, and then it's ended up here. Look at that for a difference with just a few selection tools. 
Okay, so that there is how to use the quick select tool and the magic wand tool, Photoshopicus, <laughs> in Photoshop. Now, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe. That last ed edit was kind of just a quick play, but just to show you what you can do there. Anyway, this was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune.